Um, so I'm now going to recognize myself for uh, the next round of questions. I'm really glad we're having this hearing. I'm really grateful to all of you for being here and being a part of it. And I want to start uh, with a question to you, Dr. Lee. As chair of, I'm chair of the Subcommittee on Emerging Threats, and I am concerned about potential public safety and national security ramifications of AI. Dr. Lee, you've raised concerns about AI behaving in unintended or unpredictable ways that could be detrimental to Americans. What are the key considerations for federal acquisition and procurement policy to ensure the safety of AI? Thank you, Senator. Um, I have been known to say there is no independent machine values. Machine values are human values. Especially when it comes to uh, U.S. government, I think we really need to care about the as Senator uh, Paul said, our constitutional values, our Bill of Rights, and all that. So in the pr procurement process, again, I think we must take a systematic approach to ensure that the kind of investment and, and uh, support of the, the AI systems we, uh, we want to develop and de deploy reflect our values. This includes um, starting from procurement of data, the privacy issues, the bias issues, the, the um, you know, the, the, the trustworthiness issues, all the way to the development, the development of the uh, system itself, all the way to what in machine learning we call inference, which is when you have developed the algorithm, now you're ready to deploy it and, and do things. And uh, here you again have uh, privacy issues, uh, bias issues, and trustworthy issues in the whole ethical framework. So, so again and again, I want to say that it's, this is a powerful tool, and it has good and bad sides. We need to take a systematic approach, and every step of the way, we should apply uh, responsible and ethical um, values to, to to this uh, or acquisition yeah. to the standards that we use yes. uh, in acquiring this technology. Yes. Well, thank you, um, Mr. Roberts. I want to turn to you. Uh, last year, I worked with Chairman Peters to lead the bipartisan effort to codify FedRAMP, the federal program run by GSA that evaluates cloud service providers and their products for use by federal agencies. FedRAMP promotes efficiency and increases security by having one agency responsible for vetting and approving these companies and their products. Now, I understand AI is a little bit different, but could a FedRAMP type program or an entity with aspects that FedRAMP has that is designed to specifically evaluate AI products be a feasible option for evaluating the safety of those AI products? Yes, Senator, I think that'd be beneficial. It's so much of AI is software centric, and we've had our projects uh, challenged by security requirements to include AT, uh, authorities to operate in FedRAMP. Yeah. Uh, we found ways of, of working with that, especially with prototypes, but we've been uh, looking for new guidance and new ways in which uh, we can make this easier, especially for the developers and contractors. Okay, because what we're really looking towards is conserving resources as we try to build up these standards and apply them in the acquisition process, uh, but also really having a centralized place and one set of standards that are applied across. So you think something like FedRAMP might be applicable? I think that would be helpful, okay. Senator. Uh, another question for you, Mr. Roberts. During my time in the Senate, I focused on reducing the federal government's reliance on aging technology in order to save taxpayer dollars, improve security, and obviously provide better service to the American people. I'm concerned that federal efforts to adopt and use AI may not be successful if we continue to rely on legacy IT. Could the federal government's aging infrastructure prevent us from effectively adopting AI technology? Alternatively, are there ways in which artificial intelligence could help agencies convert from costly legacy IT to modern systems that provide better services and are more efficient? Yes, Senator. And I don't think uh, legacy systems will necessarily prevent us from implementing AI. But I do think that the federal acquisition workforce needs to be more trained on making that analysis of whether to sunset a legacy system, which has been done successfully in, in various areas yeah. of the federal government, and bring about a more modernized, a flexible system with little disruption, or to try to modify that system through APIs with, with AI functionalities. But I would say that the, the best approach for uh, an agency that wants to introduce AI 
into their organization and their systems uh, that leads to the most success is to start small and start narrow and start feasible with uh, minimal risks in terms of responsible use. Yeah. And we've seen many cases of that where it's just automation through AI of business systems that create huge impact, uh, that bypass any risks toward ethics or responsible use, but also because they're done in isolation, uh, they can uh, uh, yield immediate impact to the end users. Okay, thank you. Um, and last question, again to you, Mr. Roberts. I helped lead a bipartisan effort to codify the General Service Administration's IT modernization centers of excellence, including the Center of Excellence for Artificial Intelligence. The AI Center of Excellence assists federal agencies seeking to use AI tools and acts as a centralized resource center for agencies looking to develop policies around AI. In your view, is the AI Center of Excellence equipped to provide support to all agencies, especially smaller agencies, seeking to procure and adopt AI? And if not, how could it be improved? Yes, Senator. So we had a, a good relationship in the Jake with the GSA Center of Excellence for AI. I would say that this is still a very challenging topic to, um, to try to, at scale, uh, uh, create policies and guidance to deliver and uh, procure and deliver artificial intelligence. I think uh, right now it's still a pocket. They're, they're a good uh, organization, but it's a, a pocket, whereas it should not be an anomaly. This should be more uh, mainstream and widespread, and hopefully they'll contribute to that effort. Okay. Thank you.